is the first speaker for the negation? I'll be the first speaker for the negation, Edmund Fraser. Okay. I am the first speaker for the application. Andrew. 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 Yep. Yep. Right, right, Judges comfortable with speed with uh, how many words per minute roughly? Uh, it's not gonna be that. Not gonna be that not gonna be that if 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 you need to slow down, then I'll stay clear. Go ahead, sure. Um, go. I mean, I'm sure you've read the paradigm. Have you? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. I always though I have to emphasize it. I'm fine with advanced theory and such, but at the end of the day, I think that you don't have to spread the debate with information in order to win. You convince a quality argument. So. Just remember, it's all about the quality argument for me. And I'll find it's a trick case. Yeah. yeah. All right. Second round. All right. Uh, sure. So we're with, uh, is everybody ready? Almost. Second. One. Give me one. And second. you're hunting with speed, right? What's the resolution? Oh. A EU should ban the sale of Huawei products. Um, ban the sale of what? Uh, Huawei. Huawei technology Huawei. products. Huawei. 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 Today we stand here in firm affirmation of the resolution. The European Union should ban the sale of Huawei technology products. Now going on top of the case. First of all, wing back this is going to be net benefits, screen is not good for the greater people, definitely still be contextual. Uh, going now into our inherency. First of all, so number one, Huawei right now is a public company under China. It is very closely linked to the Chinese government. The two share significant economic and political ties. Huawei is the main Chinese tech defense contractor. Number two, the EU is one of Huawei technology's biggest markets. The United States introduced regulation in the past to control the sale of Huawei in the United States, and therefore 24 23 to 40% of Huawei's market share, depending on who that is, based in the European Union. Number three, Huawei right now is sells a very new variety of products, from phones to tablets to computers to information security, is things like routers and big antennas that we use to establish Wi Fi networks. In all the products in which they make, Huawei has been engaged in data logging in virtually all products. They collect the information to share it over the network. Problematic for things like Wi Fi things. Uh, for things like 5G networks, which are considering being deployed in the European Union as we speak, Huawei is known to collect information on those products as well. Number four, the EU's current market, and the biggest thing that EU is going to spend money on when it comes to Huawei, is going to be a communications network. As you can see here, Huawei is one of the largest providers of 5G, and many EU countries are currently providing, considering the deployment of a 5G infrastructure based on Huawei products. We are stipulating the affirmation that this should not occur, and instead Huawei technology should be banned from commercial activity in the European Union. And that is our plan. The European Union will stipulate that Huawei is banned from all commercial activity and any product in the borders of the Eurozone. So I'm going to see as follows. Number one, no Huawei products will be introduced into the European Union immediately after this, which means that any of the unsubstantial practices that Huawei does is going to be banned. Huawei can no longer log its data inside the European Union. And number two, it's going to hurt Huawei financially. There's a few good reasons why we would want to do this, which we'll go into now. So our first advantage is on Huawei itself and why Huawei business practice and conduct is simply bad for the world right now. Uniqueness under uh, now for the uniqueness number one. So currently under the Chinese constitution, Huawei is required to disclose all information that it has from data collection with the Chinese government, no questions asked. So and this means that when Huawei deploys telecommunication networks, such as the 5G, it's going to be used by all members of the European Union, all citizens of the European Union. When you connect to 5G, in the European Union following a deployment of Huawei, you are going to be doing so to a Huawei device. Now what this means is that Huawei, be, Huawei has been known in the past to collect and log this data information. Crucially, when it comes to things like government employees, you will have to connect to these networks in order to communicate, and as such, this information is going to be disclosed to the Chinese government in all likelihood. Number two, on the unique test, Huawei historically has stolen trade secrets from other countries, especially companies in the European Union. So point A, Huawei has been known to drive smaller competitors out of business in Sweden by stealing 5G trade infrastructure data. But 5G, it is the hallmark of Huawei's innovation, is stolen technology as we've in the past. And they've done so on, because of the scale and the size of Huawei, they can make these small startups go out of business and essentially become the only technology company providing this 5G. Number B, uh, Huawei is protected by the Chinese government. Essentially, they don't face any consequences for their violations of international copyright law and the stealing of trade secrets. We aim to change this with the affirmation. 
Number three, in the this, Huawei has violated military trade sanctions. So point A, recently this company of Huawei has been indicted in a covert operation of selling technology through an establishment of shell companies to the government of Iran against the sanctions established by the European Union and America. Essentially, if Huawei wishes to conduct commercial operations, in theory, under these two countries, they should not have been selling weapons to the government of Iran in the first place, however they have done so covertly, and they were recently discovered. So it would be the government has, sorry, the company has faced basically zero consequences for this action. They, no sanctions have been, uh, further sanctions have been applied on them by the government of the United States or the European Union following this. We, again, aim to change it with the affirmation. Links are as follows. Number one, banning Huawei equals no Huawei's communication networks to be deployed in the European Union. And this means that there's going to be no Huawei devices to lock the information and there's no Chinese government receiving this information the Huawei device locked. Number two, there's going to be no more corporate espionage in the European Union. If Huawei devices can no longer access the amount of corporate espionage, then it's going to be infinitely harder for Huawei to actually conduct the corporate espionage that it currently does through its data logging. Number three, there's going to be no more violation of trade sanctions. Again, if you're taking financial power away from Huawei, you're going to try to coerce them into um, in co into following the legislation, which is there in the first place, to stop it from selling government to unscrupulous regimes such as Iran. Internal links as follows. Number one, a decrease in the risk of Huawei stealing trade secrets or classified national security information. Number two, no more anti-competitive practices by Huawei in the European Union. And number three, no more support for the trade sanctions violations as we're currently seeing in the status quo. So the impacts are an increase in national security for the European Union nations and an increase in the amount of the tech sector if Huawei is no longer there to unfairly compete with their companies. Now, Second menu is going to be linked to that of the Chinese government. So, uniqueness under this. Number one, Huawei is essentially divested directly into the uh, Chinese government as follows. Number A, Huawei leaders and essentially the bosses of Huawei are in high Chinese Communist Party positions. The government people are also the people who are running Huawei. Number B, Huawei gets special treatment under Chinese law. As we're doing in the past, the Chinese government just often declines to pros prosecute Huawei for any violation of any sort of international law whatsoever. So when see, Huawei, uh, China takes money directly from Huawei. It's currently Huawei's largest investor, and essentially any economic growth for Huawei as a company means that China and the Chinese government is going to get this money. Number two, worst, uh, the West is a large market, especially the European Union. So what, A, external markets are key to how Huawei generates its money. As we've given you before, 23% of its market share is in the European Union, but more crucially, 60% of its market share growth is in the European Union. So we can see here that if we were to take financial power away from Huawei, if we were to ban Huawei from operating in the European Union, it means dire financial consequences for the company and for the Chinese government who gets money directly from it. Number three, any Huawei income goes essentially directly to the Chinese government, as I said before. It's a major CCP funder and beat and help President Xi Jinping of the Chinese Communi uh, Communist Party consolidate power. Number four, Huawei is a big Chinese defense contractor. Essentially, it provides China with technology that it uses in the military. Link to as follows. Number one, plan kills Huawei's growth and investors will pull out of Huawei if there's no more growth for Huawei in the near future. So point A, this is a perceptual. If the West follows, the U.S. is likely to follow with even more strict regulations on Huawei if the EU does this. As such, Huawei is going to take even more economic damage. Number two, it kills Chinese ability to steal foreign tech. China is forced to spend less on, uh, it's going to kill on defense. Number A, there's going to be no internal willingness in CCP to spend more on stuff like VR and CFPEC. Number B, it tanks the Chinese defense infrastructure because the Huawei is the biggest funder to China's defense. The RMD is going to take decades to catch up. Internal links, reducing the Chinese military means reducing the unscrupulous practices of the Chinese government. We're going to see a shutdown in China's imperialism and the uh, concentration camps they have right now with decrease in the mass surveillance that they have over all their citizens. So the impacts are decreasing the chance of war and increase in the human rights for the people of China should we take drastic action against the Chinese government as we are in the affirmations plan. For these reasons, we strongly urge you vote for the affirmation of today's round. Thank you for your time. All right. Um, order is going to be one disadvantage. Is it wrong? No. We'll see. What's the order? The order is going to be one disadvantage, counter plan, one plan. and the AFK is in order from the inherency over to uh, Huawei products to Chinese government. Okay.
The first disadvantage is going to be economic. The first point of uniqueness is going to be that Huawei has more advanced technology than other companies right now. The A point here is that it controls 50% of the 5G market share in the EU. The B point here is that it's been rated as significantly higher speeds compared to other high-level contestation. The, the C point here is that it's proven more efficiency than the market. The main observation here is that right now a lot of the EU companies are uh, relying on Huawei to come up with its uh, high tech, uh, high high speed technology. If if Huawei isn't able to get the high speed technology, then they aren't going to be able to develop the spin off technologies that are essential for them to develop. The second point is going to be that the EU is specifically prepared for the Huawei infrastructure. The A point here is going to be due to current policy and policy movements and politicians. People are prepared for Huawei and the status quo. The B point is going to be that due to the current outlook, many companies have been accommodating for specifically Huawei economic infrastructure and towers. The C point is going to be that due to the efficiency and the prediction of the Huawei, any different provider would require a two year slowdown as predicted by the EU in order to implement. Okay, yeah, in order to implement any of this new technology. The D point is going to be that speculation has led to significant investment in the companies that rely on Huawei specifically to implement their technologies. The three point is going to be that the 5G technology is going to be good. The A point here is that it creates smart living spaces. The B point is that it improves um, uh, geolocation technology. And the C point is that it, it, it kickstarts an internet of things connecting billions of machines, which is specifically good no. in, this, in this region. Okay. So. Okay. The fourth point of the uniqueness is going to be the fragility of the EU economy. You can currently see that Italy and Germany have receding economies due to uh, global economic practices. The B point here is going to be that the Bank of England has slow growth right now. The D point here is going to be that France is falling due to the yellow vest movement. And the E point here is going to be that stimulus programs have repealed, been repealed, which is stopping growth. Okay. Um... So, yeah. so, going back to the second point, the D point is going to be that specifically the introduction of Huawei technology is predicted to be in 530 billion dollars to the EU economy. Specifically, right now, investment has 530 billion dollars in this predicted Huawei technology. So, e, the E point is going to be that a lot of this is going to be done in commercial banking. So, all right, another point. In the EU, there isn't a difference between commercial banks and investment banks, which means right now, commercial banks are involved in investment banking, which means that commercial banks are currently investing in these technologies that are predicted to get Huawei technologies. What this means is that a lot of people's personal assets are in assets that are controlled by these, uh, by these, um, by these uh, high, high, like, high stocks. Okay, so the link. The plan passes. Because Huawei's technology is introduced, this is going to slow down the innovation through this technology. The EU is going to have access to weaker tech. So basically, okay, the scenario two is going to be that the 5G bubble created through the Huawei speculation is popped. So the bubble popping is going to be really bad because they're going to lose $530 billion of potential investment. This is going to destroy the EU economy. Instead, my uniqueness argument is when I say that right now, a lot of investment commercial banks are investment banks. This means that because the assets are destroyed, specifically people who want to withdraw money from these banks are no longer going to have these assets due to over speculation on to the impacts. The first impact is going to be lower innovation. Innovation is good as it's the only war to rate resolve scientific problems in humanity, and this can solve for a lot of medical technology in the EU. The B point is going to be the economic collapse. You can see that as the bubble pops and EU economies fall, the global economies relying on trade agreements with the EU will fall as well. So basically what this means is that the EU people are no longer going to be able to um, take their money out of banks, which is going to cause recession, and this is going to have implications on the global economy because the EU is no longer going to be able to trade. On to the counter plan. The counter plan text is that the EU will establish a committee to institute 5G risk assessments. I repeat, the EU will establish a committee to, uh, it's, uh, to institute 5G risk assessments, the solvency. The first point on solvency is that right now, five risk, asset, uh, risk assessments are defined as independent investigations into whether five G technology can be used to hurt it for for privacy for like violations of privacy. The first point here is that if there's evidence of interference, then EU countries have the specific legal capabilities to kick out Huawei in this in this case. So basically, if they, if EU if we establish this committee, they're going to be able to analyze five G technologies right now to see if there's any potential violation or if there's any actual violation of technology laws. If this is true. And the EU countries have the specific legal ability to kick out Huawei. So the second point is going to be that the EU is very good at analyzing technologies. The A point here is that the EU was instrumental to finding out Russia, Russian hacking in the, in the US. It literally found out before the US, which is an indication that EU technology is specifically good. The third argument is that individual country, countries can also create risk assessments. So this is going to lar- uh, go into a larger scheme of EU risk assessments, which, okay, onto the solvency on this. So on the also, office. if we, yeah. Huawei says if they're in infrastructure, if they move out, another company can slowly yeah. move in. Uh, actually, that's that probably doesn't. Okay, yeah. If Huawei sets up their, if we, okay, yeah, I won't get to that. Okay. On the counter plan, 
So the counterplay and solvency for the affirmative contentions, essentially, they're gonna, this is going to solve for the entirety of the case, because if Huawei doesn't actually commit any violations, then we're going to keep Huawei technology. However, if they do commit a violation, and they are as bad as our opponents say, then we're going to do the opponent's plan, which is probably going to be really good. Because if we do the opponent's plan, when Huawei, and kick out Huawei, if they're actually bad, this means that we're going to be um, solving all of their security advantages. However, this also means that we have no risk of biting into the economic disadvantage. On to the uh, case. Can we have um, the text? Uh, yeah, can you write it to us? No, oh, text. Okay. Can I explain the CP just one minute? Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. On to the inherency. You can extend most of their inherency. However, we're going to say on the data logging point that there is no evidence of Huawei data logging in the EE right now. You can see that Huawei specifically has no technology to data log in the EE right now. You can see that data logging is currently occurring in China because of the fact that they are directly related to the Chinese government. However, in the EU specifically, there is no evidence of data logging. Okay. This is an indication that right now Huawei is really good, which means that if they do add data logging and technology in the future, this is probably going to trigger the counter plan, which means we solve. Okay, on to the, on to the app case. On the uniqueness on Huawei products, they say that they were required to expose all data. However, we're saying that no, they're not recording the data right now, so even if they're required to expose it, this means that they're, they're not recording it, which is probably going to be good for us. The second argument they have is that it collects government information. We're going to make the argument that it, like, it's, not, it, it, it's not collecting information right now because of the fact that it's like literally not connecting information, so we don't wait. The third argument they have is that it's going to be driving companies out. We're going to make the argument that foreign competition is probably going to be good. You can see that this, like, if, if Huawei wasn't in this EU domestic market, then we would probably just have U.S. firms taking over the the, 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 the monopoly, which is probably going to be an indication that these in, in, impacts are going to be non-unique. On the links, on the flow. I'm, on, I'm on the uniqueness. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. They say that they, the Huawei has shell companies. We're going to make the argument that like, even if they do have shell companies, we can't, like this specific, specifically kicking out Huawei isn't going to be able to shell, solve for shell companies because we're not going to know that it's Huawei in the first place. Yeah. On the links. They basically make this. They basically make this argument about like how it's going to decrease like the amount, the risk of like hacking. We're going to say that there's no risk of hacking in a world where Huawei is not currently hacking, and this just means that there's going to be a risk of the economic disadvantage triggering. We're also going to say that Chinese backlash is probably going to be really bad. In the case that the plan passes, this is going to result in Chinese backlash, which probably means that China is going to kick EU companies out of China, which is going to result in more economic collapse. On the Chinese government thing, we're going to make the. We're going to go directly to the link layer. We're going to say that right now. Um, we're going to say that right now the trade, this is, we're going to turn the link with layer, right? We're going to say that right now the trade war is in the process of de-escalating because the United States and China are making, are, are making agreements to decrease the amount of tariffs. How the, the trade war is worth, responsible for about $500 billion of actual costs for the United States and China per year. We're just going to say that this is inevitable in the status quo to resolve itself. However, if, if their link is correct and there's a perceptual link that means the, that the U.S. is going to kick out Huawei, then China is definitely not going to buy any of this and they're not going to end the trade war, which is probably going to be a bigger economic impact than anything that they have. They also say that there's no willingness for defense. We're probably just going to say that they're, go they're going to focus on like Belt and Road Initiative and expand elsewhere. Yeah. Are you ordered? Uh, okay, cool. Um, so okay, I know the case is going to be on the bottom. Let's add first third. Um, okay, I'll do the, just the order you went in, it's easy. Quick question, uh, are you guys okay with tag teaming? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. okay. Alright, so, wait, what's the order I went in? Sorry. I oh, this had kind of like, what is the order? This had an order? In order, yeah. Actually, you know what, counter plan, and then this had an order. Counter plan, okay. this had an order. Start of the counterplan, perm do won't do, do the plan. Do the, sorry. Uh, start of the counterplan, perm do the counterplan, then the plan. Neither team said it immediately or any time frame analysis on either of the plan text, which means that we get to do sequencing during the perm. This means that you do the negative plan and then you do the affirmative plan under the condition that um, if there's like a risk, then you do the current plan. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
All right, so at the point where the counterplan is passing as soon as possible and the plan is passing as soon as possible, how does the plan Counter Counterplan doesn't have time frame on it and neither did the plan. So the plan we get to do the secrecy. I mean, I'm using your counterplan text. But the plan had, like, okay. Okay, sure. cool. Okay, the second response here is that the second here response is that 5 risk assessment that committees already exist, which means that if there's songs, if, which means that if their songs were to be true, then this would that all that would happen, or which means the uniqueness overwhelms the link here. There's no offense on the counterpoint yet. Not only do the 5G risk committees already exist, the EU's information technology board has already given the conclusion that Huawei is in fact. Yeah, so so you 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 like information board already like said that Huawei's using it to using the 5G like technology to spy on the uh, spy EU says, I'll take it at the end of last time. I'll have to get through. Um, which means that these committee boards are obviously going to follow you, which means that it's, it's basically the same thing. Both, both plans are basically happening. However, okay, so Huawei is going to, on the song zero, Huawei is required to collect data from the Chinese government, for the Chinese government, which means that their, their plan is functionally the same as the affirmative yeah. plan, yeah. Their, which means that their plan is functionally the same thing as the affirmative plan. However, we're going to be winning a time frame because the um, the counter plan needs to have time to pass through, which means that you actually substantially increase the shock from the disadvantage that we're going to be talking about later. Okay, so in the economy, group of, group of like the first four, like three, four, or five, I, I can't count. The <laughs> uniqueness level responses about how like Huawei is really important to the European Union together. The three responses here, the first response is that Huawei engages in anti competitive practices, which is why there is an uh, economic community that's economic reliance on Huawei technology. The ASA point is that you know, we should probably be busting the trust and allow. Yeah. Uh, the ASA point is that we, are, we should bust the trust and actually allow companies to domestically develop. The ASA point is that domestic infrastructure is all, domestic infrastructure is already in place. Huawei wasn't always in the European Union, which means that there is a very substantial capacity. The EU power grid is fundamentally incompatible with a lot of Chinese infrastructure, which means that Huawei's proposal on 5G technology is not... Yeah. A, 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 Huawei's a proposed a 5G technology proposal is built for EU infrastructure, not the other way around, which means the EU technology companies can't fill it. The second response is exactly that. The trend here is that you actually allow uh, domestic companies to actually fill in the technology here, which means that you actually increase the long-term stability for the economy in the future because you stop relying on Ch Chinese companies in order to do your technology for you. The third response is that you turn this again, you uh, economy ex expands when Chinese hegemony decreases because the Chinese technology companies are going to see a decrease in hegemony, which means that you uh, increase market share for EU, com the EU companies to, uh, to take advantage of, which actually means that you give more money to EU technology companies, which is better for the world than, um, you know, which is better for the world than like Chinese tech companies, as like explained by the way, for the whole trade sector stuff that on the second on the first advantage. Um, Okay, then they say that the EU economy is fragile right now. Two, two, two responses. First, domestic economy fill in solves, which means that um, yeah. things are having a lot of domestic and uh, investment and, domestic and FDI and domestic yeah. companies. In, in domestic companies, which means I'll take it in the end, I have like a lot together, which which means that dem because you have domestic companies solving that means that you you see an increase in stability in the long term, which means that you saw back from fragility. The second response is you turn this EU economy is going to span, which means Chinese like hedge decreases. Yeah, just cross by that response. Um, then on commercial banks are investing, the uh, response here is that investment shift is going to happen towards EU companies. It is actually going to happen substantially more because uh, EU, com EU domestic companies are often a lot more stable investments for commercial banks, which means that you actually see an increase in investment. So you turn the entire link we used to solve for the a lot better than they do on the uh, on the weaker tech and bubble pops and two responses first and anti-competition is what is ca causing the bubble which means that even if you cause a bubble right now you prevent bubbles in the long term second response is that domestic technology solved here because the bubble is not going to be caught the bubble is going to be reinforced the, the bubble is basically going to be replaced by a much stronger economy in the long term um and also in the short term okay yeah cool which, which takes out like literally all the responses also like all the turns like probably mean that we solve for the economy better Okay, on top of case, on, yeah, on top of case. First, they say that there's no evidence in the, um, so, first, they say that there's no evidence in the European Union that they're recording information. Just group all the, like, recording information stuff together because we have to respond to all of them. First, there's, first, group all these, your responses together. First, there is, like, first, there is evidence of, like, the Huawei recording the information that happens on people's phones all the time. This is how we, like, found out about this giant scam in the first place. Second response is that this is also, like, Huawei is required to re record all this stuff and record it to the CCP, which means that even if Huawei doesn't want to, they still have to require it by Chinese law. The third response is that, is, is that because China because China really wants it, then the only way for Huawei to even get funny in the first place is if they collect data, which means that that's always going to be happening. Yeah, I'll take your question now. Uh, no, it's fine. I don't have the question anymore. Oh, okay, cool. Um, okay, starting on the first amendment, first response that they give us is that, that we don't solve the shell argument. The response here is that we, because we're substantially decreasing the amount of money, because we're substantially decreasing the amount of money and the amount of funding that um, the Huawei actually gets, and that means that Huawei is going to see this as a sign, and one will no longer have the legal capacity in order to hire all these lawyers in order to build these shell companies. That's the first place, and secondly, they're going to see this as a sign as their shell companies are actually causing themselves economic harm, which means that they're not going to be doing anymore, which means that we solve for there. They say that China's going to have backlash. Two responses here. First is non unique. We've already had nations like Canada, which 
which is also another another large Huawei consumer, put sanctions on Huawei. We've already had, um, wait, hold on. Yeah, we've also had uh, things like phone ops and things like that, which means that China's not gonna have a substantial amount of backlash. Um, Oh yeah, we've also had sanctions about China in the past, which means that China's not gonna have substantial backlash in terms of companies, which means that the uniqueness overwhelms links type of response is that you also turn this argument because China's now becoming more dependent on, on the EU and other sectors in order to boost their own economy, which means that China's actually going to comply with EU regulations because China, Xi Jinping wants to like fund things like the Road Initiative and CPAC, which means that he's not gonna be collapsing his own economy. Cross apply those responses onto their trade war analysis because um, trade war analysis is like they're never always going to collapse their own economy. The second response here is that, that that's not the European Union, like Xi Jinping's not like like blind to like who's who, which means that he's going to be, uh, he's like, trade war's not gonna be effective. Also, we're gonna be putting defense on our own perceptual link. There's not gonna be any perceptual. Trump is against the European, Trump is this pretty social against the European Union, which means that trade war, there's no effect on trade war. Yes. Severance? There's not severance. I can put defense on my own case. I'm not severing out of my advocacy. Okay. Um, actually, go back to disadvantage. I have a lot more time, so I have a lot more responses. <laughs> okay. Cool. Hmm. Okay, they say that they say that there's going to be two years slowdown. This is empirically denied. That that study came from a Huawei funded study, which means that that's probably like geared way towards Huawei being able to actually be able to form the. They, they say that the Huawei has a lot more high speed and it's more efficient. That's all technology that's stolen from native domestic companies, which demonstrates that it is a, a substantial capacity to fill. And right now, because all that technology was from from European Union uh, like nations. Uh, and the technologies like Andrew specifically says things like Sweden, where the technology was a little stolen from Sweden and caused a collapse in the domestic industry, which I mean, like this interest is already there, we can already build it there. Um, yeah. Anything else? What you want to cover on the disadvantage or the counter plan? Because it's not important. Just one thing. Oh yeah. Um, the, 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 nothing on. Mm, okay. Cool. Go to the, and go to the first advantage. I have some couple of extensions. Sorry for jumping around a lot. Okay. So, uh, several extensions. First, you, you see that the e 5G network means that you're affecting all European Union individuals. That means that that gives the capacity for China to track all European Union. That gives China the capacity to track all European Union individuals, which is substantially harmful because this increases the capacity for China to have a lot more leverage over the European Union, which means that you see an increase in Chinese hedge, which probably means that you see an increase in these sorts of anti competitive practices and companies and things like that. This also means that because you're encouraging Huawei under the status quo and under the account plan, what happens is that you encourage other business, Chinese businesses to endorse these kind of practices, which means that you can see a decrease in the economy in the long term. Yeah. All right. Considering that their account plan makes no stipulation for removing Huawei should any information breaches be found, the fact that information breaches have already been found, we can see that even if their committee comes to any conclusion, nothing will occur. Yeah, no, nothing will be done. The committee's already come to the same conclusion in the past. Okay, hold on. CP and DA is advantage. One second. Yeah, CP, uh, DA is advantage. And a framework on top of their, uh, sorry, a top of the case on top of their advantage. Yeah, so CP, DA is their whole case in order. Start my time now. You're gonna see that if you don't mention a time frame, sorry, on the CP on the firms, you're gonna see that if they don't mention a time frame, it's contextual that as soon as possible. So you're gonna be weighing that perm doesn't happen, okay? <laughs> There's no perm. Okay, so now on the inherency. So you're gonna be seeing that they said that the EU has already concluded on spying. You're gonna be seeing that the EU has concluded on spying in other foreign nations, and they have not concluded in spying in the EU. Otherwise, this is like literally false statistic. EU would literally kick off Huawei if this is true. So you're gonna be seeing that this is not a, a true warrant. The next thing is that they said that we we uh, that they went on time frame. You're gonna be seeing that term time frame. We're gonna be winning time frame because specifically the two years slowdown, but I'll get into that in the DA, yeah? Also, the, like, this, this whole like, statistic was created by the US to make sure that Apple was gonna be able to compete with Chinese companies. Like, their statistics are literally from the United States. Yeah, like, their companies. statistics are literally from the United States and it, it, they're, uh, motiv they're motivated from a bad part, uh, sorry, they're badly motivated. Okay, on inherency, key extension we make on inherency is that uh, EU is good at finding hacking. We have a 100% solvency at finding hacking happening. So what you're gonna be seeing is that any defense that they lay on, this 
reason their PMR don't weigh on it. Okay, so on their disadvantage, so uh, sorry, on to our disadvantage about the economy. So first of all, they say that you got, uh, Huawei engages in anti-competition practices. However, uh, you're going to be seeing that even if, like, uh, regardless of if it does, it still has a better technology, and you're not going to deny the fact that it still has a two years. Uh, so it still has a better technology, higher speeds, and higher efficiencies. You're going to be seeing that it's the most uniquely beneficial for UK. They for you. They can see that companies right now are relying specifically on Huawei's. Yeah, they can so see the fact. They can see the fact that companies right now in the EU speculation right now relies on Huawei technology so it doesn't matter if that anti-competitive practices they don't have any uh, solvency on that either so they say that Huawei is already set up so what you're gonna be so sorry technology. sorry what it's not 5G technology oh sorry sorry uh yeah what what is it so um, it's just not 5G technology. Yeah, so they say Huawei's already set up. You're gonna be seeing that it's just not 5G technology. So they say that the EU is incompatible with Huawei. Actually, false. This is the complete opposite. The EU has been speculating Huawei moving into the market. So the EU is specifically prepared for Huawei. And you're gonna be weighing our warrantation and our logic over their over just their fake warrant. Okay, so next thing is on the two-year slowdown. This is a key thing that we're gonna be winning. So they say that it has come from a Huawei-funded study. However, it's assuming what study we got it from. We got it from an objective study. And you're gonna be seeing that the two. <laughs> you're gonna be seeing that the two-year slowdown actually happens what ha like and also look at the logic for this the EU has been prepared for Huawei uh, like coming up to this moment so they have prepared for specifically Huawei 5G infrastructure so the two year slowdown is gonna happen yeah they say that they have domestic infrastructure but they also say that it's been crushed which means there's no yeah, way they the say that we already have domestic infrastructure but you're gonna be seeing the domestic fine. domestic infrastructure is already crushed you're gonna be seeing that oh, Huawei uh, Huawei uniquely doesn't have a two year slowdown okay um next is uh EU so yeah, you're gonna. It's, um, yeah, so on the EU economy fragile. So they basically say their domestic economies are currently solving. Are you gonna be seeing their domestic economies are clearly not solving? But the, the Italian, German, British economies are all receiving. France government, France economy is uh, failing right now, and the economic stimulus programs have been rolled back. All of this warrantation warrants that the EU economy is fragile. No matter what they say, they only bring up one warrant. way our five warrants against that, and you're gonna be seeing that the EU economy is fragile. Okay, onto the link layer of it. So they basically say that the uh, EU economy will expand if they ban Huawei. You're gonna be seeing it's the complete opposite. EU economy can only expand if they introduce Huawei. Huawei has the $530 billion benefit, and specifically Huawei has a bubble built around it. You're gonna be seeing that the EU can only expand in the world where we implement Huawei, uh, Huawei to actually stick with the investor con to stick with the investor confidence right now. You're also gonna be seeing that their role specifically has the EU collapse because the EU will uh, the e sorry the EU economy will collapse because the bubble will be popped yeah um they make the or we're gonna make like we make arguments about how uh Actually, oh yeah, I know. They can see the arguments about when we say that like multiple EU firms specifically are relying on Huawei. Yeah, yeah. multiple EU firms are currently relying on Huawei technology. So the bubble is built specifically around Huawei. So what you're going to be seeing is that we need to introduce Huawei to make sure that the bubble is not popped. So yeah. like EU, EU companies withdraw from those firms that are reliant on Huawei technology because they'll no longer have it or they won't have a time frame to have it, yeah. which means the bubble pops. Also extend our entire impact scenario about economic collapse. You're gonna be seeing that they, if we prove that the EU bubble will pop, we prove that there's a global economic collapse and you're gonna be weighing this heavily in today's round. Okay, sorry, I'm jumping a bit, but I'm gonna go back to the CP. A quick solvency point on the CP that goes untouched is that Huawei specifically has an incentive not to hack. When they are spoke, well, sorry, uh, yeah, so, you know, Huawei now has a, like, a incentive not to hack. When they're, when Huawei is introduced, they make the analysis that China actually needs the funds. If China needs the funds, then Huawei will move in, and when they see that the EU will actually push out Huawei, you're gonna be seeing the fact that Huawei in this, in our world, in our CP, has a specific incentive to be ethical, because they know that Otherwise, they will be caught and they will be pushed out. So Huawei, we're giving it a chance, and that chance relies on it acting properly. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be winning on that. And uh, I'll take a question at the end of my time. I have a lot to get through. Okay, so on to the inherency. Uh, actually, no, just go, go on to the first advantage. So uh, they so they say that there's evidence of Huawei reporting. Are you going to be seeing that this is specifically the U.S. and also the U.S. motivated reports? You're going to be seeing that this has not happened in the EU, and because it hasn't happened in the EU, you're going to be seeing that the EU is a specific case. EU has better hacking capabilities, and also EU is, due to our special condition under their counter plan, we have specific we have better solvency for this. Okay, and uh, they say that uh, you can, they, they basically say that there's going to be an increase in Chinese hegemony. Are you going to be seeing that the increase in high, Chinese hegemony will not, like, I'm oh, sorry, what, what's the use on? They say increase in Chinese, Chinese, like, like what? What's something? Uh, actually, yeah. never mind, yeah. Okay, so uh, they, so basically you're also going to be extending the fact that there's no risk of hacking when the EU is literally su super good at, like, super good at, uh, like, detecting. So you're going to be seeing that there's going to be no hacking in both worlds. At the point where uh, EU is good enough to detect a threat before it happens, you're going to be seeing that hacking will not happen in both worlds. Because as soon as hacking is detected, Huawei goes bye-bye. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so onto uh, Chinese, uh, so they say Chinese backlash, so we say Chinese backlash, you're gonna be extending this. So basically they say, the only uh, thing they say over here is that Canada has already put sanctions and China has not backlash. However, you're gonna be seeing that uh, specifically the EU is a bigger market and the EU is uh, the key, uh, again, again, like uh, extend their analysis about Huawei relies specifically on the EU. So the uh, Chinese will uh, lash back a lot stronger if it's specifically that. And Chinese backlash is bad because it leads to trade wars and actual wars, yeah. Okay. Also extend their analysis on the Belt and Road Initiative. This is terminal no solvency for them because China will just go to other markets in like yeah, Africa. Okay, okay so uh, yeah, Excel the solvency on Belt and Road Initiative. If you think that it, about, if you buy their Belt and Road Initiative warrant, you're gonna be seeing that China, they have literally no solvency because if you reject them outright, they're just gonna move to a different country which they can exploit even easier. The EU is extremely hard to exploit and that's why it's unique that uh, we uh, uh, that the uh, uh, EU takes Huawei. Okay, under the Chinese government, so you're gonna be seeing that you're gonna extend the fact that uh, did I miss anything on the first advantage? Uh, no. Okay, so uh, you're on the second advantage, you're gonna be extending the fact that trade war is de-escalating right now, and China will continue to trade war if we if you do not give it this much if you do not give uh, the EU market. Uh, sorry, what's the trade war here? No, the trade war argument is like right now there are measures in place to end the trade war. However, extend their link. We say that right, right now, now there are measures in place to, uh, to prevent the trade war, but extend their link. To, yeah, sorry. they say that their link is that the, there's going to be a perceptual shift for the U.S. Even if they put defense on this argument, there's still a chance, and they read it. Yeah, so, so you're going to be seeing, a, due to the perceptual link over here, you're going to be seeing that the trade war will not be resolved in our opponent's world, and we specifically resolve the trade war, just extend our perceptual link. Yeah, so basically the analysis is, like, the U.S. is, there's going to be no progress on the trade war. That's inevitable for ending right now because the U.S. is going to like end Huawei, which is going to be really yeah. Nice. So, so yeah, extend that. So okay, uh, overview on the round. You're not going to buy the perm because contextually, time frame means as soon as possible. You're also going to be seeing on the in, uh, so on the inherent. So also the next overview is that the EU is good at hacking. No hacking will actually happen. It will detect a threat before it happens. And the next thing you're going to be seeing over here is because of that, we are providing the specific economic stimulus that the EU needs to come out of its current recession. Thank you. Okay. Messy round, <laughs> overview, <laughs> disadvantage one, hold on, okay, one sec. Okay, go on your roadmap real quick. Okay. So actually, overview, okay, half case, specifically, all right, overview, okay. counter plan, half case, So overview, counter plan, half case in order. Okay. Um, then the disadvantage in order. Okay. So. Starts. Overview to the round is that the counter plan has full solvent, as much solvency as the affirmative, but we also don't link into any of the risks of the economic arguments that we put on their, their contentions and also through the disadvantage. Going on to the going on to the counter plan, we say that the EU is going to establish a committee to institute these risk analysis assessments. We also say that if these risk assessments f turn out to be true, then the EU is inevitably going to kick Huawei out. So, what does this mean? Essentially, if the EU finds that Huawei has violated stuff, they're going to kick them out. They say that the EU has already found that they have violated them, but this is empirically untrue because EU laws dictate that if there is a violation, they would have cut them out already, so their like, warrant is literally impossible. So this means that we solve for the entirety of the affirmation's case. Because if we're able to do this as soon as there's a violation, we don't risk the economic stuff. Additionally, there's more incentive for Huawei not to do this because, as they said, China doesn't want to wreck its economy. The only way to wreck its economy in a world where the counter plan is true is for China to, it, it is for China to literally do this hacking, which it's not going to do because China doesn't have the hacking capabilities in the EU right now. This is specifically only in China. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? The fact that we have a condition of solvency. Yeah. Yeah. So, worst case for the negation is that it happens like instantly. But in that case, you probably just vote us on presumption. Additionally, okay, going on to the um, advantages. On the advantages, we're going to be solving for the entirety of the advantages. 
mainly because if China is actually bad, we're not going to be wrecking the EU economy. Additionally, they concede a major argument when we say that the trade war is probably going to be a very big impact. They read all these impacts for like economic stuff and like China being bad and like Belt and Road Initiative and stuff, but the main observation on the advantages is that there are two key unique, ar unique arguments. The first unique argument is that if they're kicked out of the EU, they're just going to go to other countries that are easier to exploit, such as those in Africa, as per their own analysis with the Belt and Road Initiative, which means that they get no solvency. The second argument that they can see here is that we say that when this happens, specifically the trade war, the, they, by their own perceptual link, that the US is going to continue the trade war, which is going to result in $500 billion of tariffs. We're going to contextualize this to literal dead people because of the fact that in China right now, people are dying due to the tariffs because farmers can't sell their products to the United States. This is probably going to be one of the most proximal impacts in the round. So we're definitely winning the, uh, the affirmative case on the case terms, on the disadvantage. They completely lose the disadvantage at the point where they concede that right now, or at the point where they make the analysis that right now, EU companies right now do not have any infrastructure. We say that in order to for these companies to develop infrastructure, they need to build it. This means that there's going to be a two-year delay. In this two-year delay, you're going to have an economic collapse. Here's why. Well, right now you have commercial banks that are investment banks in the EU. All of these are investing into companies that are reliant on Huawei's technology being there. If Huawei's technology isn't there, as they conceded, what's going to happen is that these investors are going to significantly withdraw from these companies. This triggers the link scenario when we say that these, these, these banks are no longer going to be able to pay out to people who want to get their money because their assets have gone significantly down in value, which is going to lead to economic collapse. Their only way out on this contention is to make this domestic economy argument. Those were, that was, like, that's all of their stuff. Domestic economy doesn't work because of their own analysis. They say that the like, domestic economy is domestically low because Huawei crushed it. So this means that you just lead to economic collapse. On to impact weighing. Economic collapse is, there are like three scenarios to economic collapse. The first scenario is through the trade war, the second scenario is through the disadvantage. If we're winning economic collapse, this is probably going to be the only impact in the round. They didn't impact out privacy and security. They say that private, like China could take our stuff, but at the point where we're literally like losing hundreds of thousands of dollars in the EU and in, in, in China due to like this economic collapse, that probably doesn't matter. So if there's even a risk of the disadvantage, prefer the disadvantage because there's no way that the affirmation can outweigh the risk of an economic collapse happening in the EU, which probably means that you're going to be voting for the negation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, everybody ready? Yeah. Uh, what's that? Okay, uh, I'll be first addressing the counter plan. Um, I'll be then addressing the hour case, and then I'll finally I'll be addressing the one disadvantage on people. Just go for it. Just go for it. Okay. Okay. okay no, fine. Repeat. Repeat the roadmap. Okay. Uh, counter plan first. Yeah. Hour two advantages in order. Uh, their disadvantage. All right. Okay. With that, I'd like to start. Time. Now, going first on the counter plan, first of all, we must recognize that they are at a terminal solvency deficit here. First of all, they claim, their biggest sweeping claim today is that Huawei is not currently conducting surveillance in the European Union or that they cannot adequately conduct surveillance because the EU has better technology. Both of these are empirically false. The entire reason that we have this debate topic in around right now is because Huawei has been assessed and known in the past by both EU and US committees working on behalf of governments and other companies to have been collecting and spying for information. If you don't believe this, we can see codified into the public Chinese constitution. Huawei, as a Chinese company, is legally required to codify, collect, and disclose all its information to the Chinese government. It's a well-known fact that Huawei currently is doing this thing. Secondly, they talk about how the EU has anti-hacking measures. Huawei isn't hacking anybody's data. They're just, if you use a Huawei cell tower after their plan passes, Huawei is going to get your information that you were sending. Oh, we did not read this as a hacking argument. We just said this is a data collection argument. And if there is any chance that Huawei actually installed the technology in their EU developing like sectors, then they would be caught. It was not a hacking argument. So I think re-clarifying it as a hacking argument is new in the PMR. And uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff had a chance to respond to it in his uh, speech. Okay, I like, okay. so I don't remember, I mean, on my flow it says hacking. Yeah, so I don't know that's a word that you guys the use. Was, like, the, word, the terminology used was the EU has a variable to term because the EU is ahead in anti-hacking technology than the European, than the United States. Yeah. Still, it came out as a Edward speech. Sorry, it came out as a first speaker speech. So your second speaker had a chance to refute it. Like we're saying, what we're saying is that 
when we clarified this and we said that they have the technology to detect if there's data collection or hacking, this is what is going to result in stuff. We're, what they're saying is that it's only hacking and data collection is somehow completely different. We believe that this clarification is new in the PMR because this was extended as a solvency point for us in the MO. Okay, okay. under consideration. All right, sure. Okay, cool. With that, I'd like to resume time now. Anyway, it's just like, yeah, the orientation hacking and data collection is well known, and just essentially just simply zero way to stop it because it's going to create European Union. So if we given right now that Huawei right now is collecting data, and they're required by the Chinese government to collect data, and we have essentially see two scenarios by, of their counterpoint scenario. One in which is that the EU establishes a community, and the community finds out that Huawei is collecting information because they will have to if they want to operate as a Chinese company, and then essentially kicks Huawei out, at which point these two plans become effectively identical. Or we can see the more likely outcome, which is that the EU government knows that Huawei is collecting data, they know they're sending to the Chinese government, and they don't do anything. In which case, we can see here there's very, just basically zero possibility that Huawei is going to continue to operate without data because Collecting data and these unscrupulous business practices is what makes Huawei so successful. Their money comes from the fact that they're being extremely unethical with everything. If they choose to be unethical, then they're just not going to get the information. They're not have the capacity to actually compete in the status quo. And we can see this whole argument about Huawei collapsing and like the EU collapse. It's going to happen if Huawei even tries to stop its unethical practices because then it simply doesn't have the R&D in order to do any of the things. Yes. I think the analysis that Huawei gets its money from selling data instead of selling phones is new. Okay. Yeah. Wait, that, 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 sorry, like, and that was not the argument. The argumentation made was that Huawei as a business operates like in a first speech because they do these unscrupulous practices because of stealing, uh, they, they get their money because they steal other companies' trade secrets and then they sell it to sanctioned actors. Yeah, that came out of the YC and I'm pretty sure I extended that point on the first advantage that Huawei is required to like Huawei gets special treatment, and they also like, like collect a lot of information. I'm pretty sure there's okay. Like certain okay. All right. Using time now. Anyway, just that the very structure of Huawei as a company as it is in status quo is based on unethicality. So if you allow Huawei, then they're going to operate on unethicality. If you ban Huawei, these two plans are exactly the same. Now let's go into the whole argument of yes. Uh, Presumption flow is out. Point of order. <laughs> you, know, okay. you know what? Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> Point of order. We said that presumption flows neg if they're the same thing. This one conceded, which means that presumption does flow neg if they're the same thing. All right. And we'll do it on time. Okay, yeah, we're doing time. Okay. time now. Okay. Yeah. They lose on frame. They lose on time frame. Okay, they lose on time frame. We go. Yeah, okay, they lose on one frame frame because if it takes the EU time to reach the conclusion that in that time the Huawei still has time to collect data and break down security. On the argument of Huawei bad, and specifically why Huawei is bad, and we've given you the fact that there's irrefutable evidence that Huawei is collecting data that the Chinese government requires them to collect data. There's simply zero evidence that there, there's or zero argumentation that they make that Huawei is going to act, 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 act ethically. I was thinking like they talk about things like shell companies and like how Huawei is going to screw all these. The fact of the matter is, if Huawei wants to operate to any sort of capacity whatsoever, they're going to have to collect this data and they're going to have to add that. And that's like, yeah. Yeah, on Belt Road Initiative, because we're collapsing with the Chinese government. Yeah, fine. Anyways, so going to, yeah, just going internal links. If we were doing this, we're essentially enabling Chinese practices like giving them money. Now let's go into the second one in China extensions. Now, their uh, argumentation here is that China is going to um, repair that kind of damage to the BRI. China is going to repair the economic damage of BRI. Now we can see here that Africa is not tantamount to the EU market. And second of all, these two things are simply not the same thing. These two things are simply not the same thing. It's very unlikely that China is going to expand the BRI instead of conceding to other nations because of how small the Chinese African market is in compared to the BRI. Point China's more, yes. I think analysis on how like the entire continent of Africa doesn't have like as big of a market as the EU or isn't a viable route to expansion is new. Okay, right. So the links made for Contention 2, which is on China relations, mm -hmm. is that the most likely outcome due to the size of the EU's market and importance of Huawei is that China is going to concede policy towards these two nations. Yeah. So essentially, this is essentially that point. And the argumentation as to why this is going to more likely occur than the VR would make in the second speech. All right. Yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, resume time now. So just overall, we can see here that China's most likely course of action, if we just take out so much of their data, because Huawei is so important to the Chinese government, the Chinese government is essentially being strong-armed in the coercion. Any sort of response that they can muster is simply not going to repair the damage. As such, the most likely outcome is going to be a Chinese concession to our demands. Yes. Also, because Chinese hedge is decreasing because they don't have Huawei anymore, then that yeah, decreases their exploitation. Yeah, just, oh, yeah, overall, because, like, yeah, furthermore, like, it weakens the power, the hard power of the Chinese government as well, because... Huawei is such an important company to the technology and to the military of China. If we get rid of Huawei and we get rid of China, Huawei's economic prowess, we're just weakening uh, the Chinese government on default because they just don't have the access to the same technologies we now do. They don't have access to the R&D budget. Now, going now into the point about... Uh, yeah. Go to economy. Yeah, going now to the point of economy. So, first of all, like... Okay, on the point of economy, we can see, first thing, they can say that Huawei is crucial to the economy. We can see here... 
that Huawei has been taking out these companies, the people who are in these companies and the infrastructure required for these companies is still there. There's still the education, still the engineers in these countries. And if the EU wants to rebuild its technological sector anew, it has the resources to do so. If we're to kick out Huawei, this is what's going to occur. We're going to see the whole EU re-immigrate and rebuild its Chinese sector. As they said before, the EU tech sector, even after now, is superior to Huawei. It's better in education. Than, yes. We said the EU was worse than Huawei. It's not better. Oh, yeah, yeah. I said the EU is better than the US. Not, uh, I'm okay. sorry. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Which was the Apple analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, resume time. Now, we can see here that EU uniquely has the resources to rebuild the tech sector, and if we were to kick out Huawei, then we're rebuilding the sector. They're essentially selling the barn to China. They're making it so China and a Chinese company and the Chinese government controls a crucial part of the EU economy. For a two-year gain, they're willing to sell the entire IT sector of the European Union over to China. Now, what this means is economic independence, because this creates an even bigger bubble because of the lack of any sort of competition. If Huawei falters, then everything just goes wrong. The crash that they talk about is not going to occur today, but it's going to occur at a later Date. Whereas if we make a more, yes. Okay. Last one. But I think that the fact that you're saying that it's going to result in a new bubble because of Huawei, instead of Huawei just dominating the market and having good technology is new. I think the analysis that it's going to create a bigger yeah. bubble in China. Yeah, so like um on response to the links, uh Jeffrey has said in the second speech anti-competition, and I think Results of anti-competition leads to the formation of more economic bubbles. Yeah, so like I made the analysis that anti-competitive practices and the domination of Huawei in the long term will lead to greater economic reliance on China, which means that you have greater economic collapses and greater economic instability. Uh, I think that's new, but okay. Okay, sure. Okay. With that, resuming time now. Furthermore, if we were to place the Chinese government with the European Union, we're creating jobs, we're creating employment, and we're creating education with the European Union. Simply put, a dollar put toward a EU company is more than a dollar put toward the Chinese company if we're talking about the impacts on the EU's economy. So, for further economic process and sustainable economic growth, for a limit on the checkbacks and the unscrupulous products of the Chinese government, for a limit on the products of Huawei, we strongly urge an affirmation battle. Thank you for your time. Everybody, we have a best Oh, do you mind sending us that recording? Oh, yeah. Or we were just recording too. Oh, who did it? Yeah, who did it? Joel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then he's going to post it.